Let's get some more reaction to the results from the financial sector that we've seen today and last Friday as well. Joining us for reaction is Gerard Cassidy. He's the head of U.S. Bank Equity Strategy for RBC Capital Markets. And Gerard, what do you think of Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, what we've heard so far today? Becky, one of the common themes we're seeing today is that the credit quality picture for the banks on Friday, as well as today with Bank America, less so than Goldman, their numbers are very uh, convoluted because of the sale of Green Sky. But credit uh, is resilient. Yes, we're seeing some normalization, but the costs associated with credit are lower than expected. The other big uh, piece of the news, of course, is that the net interest income, which is a big driver for revenue of Bank America and more universal banks, is is hanging in there. It's, it didn't go down as much as expected. So overall, the bottom, the numbers are coming in slightly to better than expected for most of these banks. I guess the big takeaway from that is that the economy is still hanging in there, especially when it comes to the consumer, even what businesses are feeling at this point. So maybe that means a downturn or recession is a little further off than some people are predicting. Becky, you're, you're spot on. I mean, we at the beginning of the year, along with others, thought we we're going to have a slowdown by now. We built up our reserves for the banks and our models, and we're pushing that out into next year. We're increasing our estimates for this year as those credit costs are lower, but we're lowering the estimates because we're moving more of those costs into next year. But I would emphasize this is a normalization process. It's not a deterioration deterioration could happen in a hard landing, but if we have a soft landing next year, the banks will manage through this credit picture pretty uh, efficiently. Is that your base case at this point? What, and I ask just because the bank stocks have been under a lot of pressure. They have not performed well this year. They've underperformed pretty substantially from the, the broader markets. Is this a buying opportunity? I, I think it is, Becky, and, and you're absolutely right. They, the stocks have greatly underperformed this year. It's primarily due, we think, to what's happened to the long end of the yield curve and the unrealized bond losses at Bank America. That's the biggest albatross right now around their neck. But as rate, should rates start to come down, obviously that will melt away. But when it comes to if the economy next year is not going into a hard landing or a real recession where unemployment exceeds you know, six or seven percent, and the unemployment number creeps up to four to four and a half percent next year, a slowdown takes place. That's a, this is a good opportunity to own the banks, especially, Becky, if the Fed gets to the terminal rate on Fed funds, if we're there now in the last four tightening cycles, that's been the catalyst for the bank stocks to work. Gerard, it's a, it's a tight enough needle to try and thread just to say, okay, yeah. we're going to have a soft recess, or a soft landing and, a, and a, a downturn, but not a terrible downturn. That, that is difficult enough. But if you then have to do the second derivative of that and say, on top of that, it needs to be a soft landing, but the Fed has to lower rates so that all of these, you know, the, these losses on the bond portfolios melt away, as you said. I mean, that's even trickier. If, it, if it's a soft landing, the Fed's not going to lower rates. They're, they're not going back to that place. And so then you have the continued losses on the book. How do you, how do you kind yeah, of debate no, that and figure out where to go? Yeah. yeah, how to triangulate that is a very good point. And you really have to go back to 1994-95 for the last time that it's happened in the Greenspan where he was able to thread the needle. But you're right. It is a threading of the needle. But the real critical part for the banks is that they can live with those unrealized bond losses because we know over time they will come back. The, the critical factor is credit. And if we have a soft landing with the terminal rate being reached, those the combination of those two factors will outweigh the unrealized bond losses in our view. And that's the reason we can own bank stocks. Plus, as you know, as you pointed out, they've greatly underperformed this year. They're underowned by the institutional community. And I would say that from a valuation standpoint, they're very inexpensive. The other issue you have is even if the, the portfolio, the bond losses are, are not a big deal, if you can just carry that out for longer and longer, you still have smaller banks that are dealing with the issues of commercial real estate losses. Mm -hmm. If rates don't come down, they can't refinance those, um, those loans either. Is it an issue where you look at different tiers of banks, big banks versus small banks, or are there just banks that are better operators than others? How, how do you break down who you like the most or which stocks you like the most? Yeah, it's a good question because commercial real estate is obviously a big loan category for the smaller banks in this country, the banks that are under $50 billion in assets. Uh, the larger banks, of course, particularly the top 20 banks, 
the exposure to commercial real estate is uh, rel is low, uh, especially compared to 1990, which is the last time they really blew up on commercial real estate. And what's interesting, though, Becky, is that these um, borrowers are going to work with the banks. The regulators are very supportive with the banks to work with the customers. And if the properties are fully leased and it's and it's a matter of higher mortgage rates and lower values, they can work with their borrowers. It's where the properties are 40 or 50 percent vacant, then you have a very serious problem. And we're seeing that. But fortunately for the banks, most of that kind of problem is in the shadow banking industry with the uh, commercial mortgage-backed securities area. But in terms of banks to, to potentially own, Bank of America certainly comes to the top of the list. It's what, obviously, it's one of the bigger banks. Some of the regional banks, BNC, that reported on Friday, Fifth Third, that's going to report this week, are ways investors can own banks going into the end of the year.